620 public hearing, uh, call, I'm calling it to order, uh, ordinance establishing procedures for licensing and public safety police details at entertainment establishments. Roll call, Ms. LeBrow. Mr. Barnes. Present. Ms. Cantor. Here. Mr. Davidoff. Here. Mr. Dodge. Here. Ms. Fay. Here. Ms. Kerrigan. Here. Mr. Sweeney. Here. Mr. Winograd. Here. And Mr. Williams. Here. Thank you, Ms. LeBrow. We have a presentation from the town. Mr. Dume. Members of the council, for the record, Todd Dume, town planner. I'm here to provide a very brief orientation to the proposed entertainment license amendment that's before you this evening. Uh, this amendment has been several months in the work, primarily with our CPPS committee. Um, we've gone through several drafts and iteration and looking at different options and data. Uh, it can be divided really uh, into three parts. The first part are some definitional changes. We're proposing two new definitions to the ordinance. Those are the addition of disc jockey and public safety threat. The second part would seek to add a location-based criteria. So anyone seeking an entertainment license would have to provide for either all of their parking on site or within 500 feet of a municipal parking facility. And lastly, there is a series of changes <clears throat> that are related to the administration and enforcement of the entertainment license. And those were largely uh, a result and request of our police department's experience in um, administering the entertainment license procedures to date. Um, that's the real high level presentation. I'm here to an answer any questions. We also have Assistant Chief McHugh and Kristen Gorski who did some outreach to <coughs> potentially impacted businesses as a result of these changes. Thank you, Mr. DeMay. Is there, okay, Mr. Winograd. Uh, thank you. Uh, if, it's mentioned in the sort of summary here, but if you could uh, talk a little bit more about the outreach to impacted businesses, that would sure. be helpful. And that was something the CPPS committee asked us to do. So what we did was we analyzed all of the establishments in town who might be eligible for an entertainment license. Currently, we came up with a list of 153 such establishments throughout the whole uh, geography of West Hartford. Of that 153, we have 27 current establishments with entertainment licenses. Actually, while I'm speaking, I can pass that spreadsheet around. Um, of all of those 127, I'm sorry, 153, and then the 27 existing licenses, it took a little bit more digging, but we looked at, of those establishments, who currently provides all their parking on site or is with, located within um, 500 feet of a municipal parking facility. And that list boils down to 27, um, sorry, 15 establishments who don't provide parking on site. Uh, those are primarily concentrated along Park Road, and then there's a couple of outliers on Farmington Avenue, um, New Britain Avenue, and New Park Avenue. Of those potentially impacted, only one currently has an entertainment license, so they'd be unaffected by this change because that's, I believe that's plan B. They already have a license, so they wouldn't be impacted by this change. So the remaining 14, uh, Kristen Gorski went to each business and, and had contact uh, with the business owners, explain the ordinance and ask for any feedback. And I don't want to speak for her, but I don't think we heard any negative feedback or concern based on what we were proposing. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Winograd. Um, Ms. Gorski, would you want to just come up and sort of summarize your thank you? Good evening, Chris Gorski, Economic Development Specialist. So as Todd had um, indicated, I went to each of the potentially affected businesses, um, that is uh, 15 businesses, and I explained the proposed changes to the ordinance and how they could be affected in the future. Um, and there re were really no concerns. Um, the only uh, really concerns there were, for, were from two businesses, and that was Zaytun's Bistro, as well as Chengdu, excuse me, three, um, and Jay Renee. Those three businesses decided that um, they would, in fact, at some point in the future, like to have either live or amplified music. So they are in the process of applying for entertainment licenses. The rest of the businesses that were visited, they didn't have any sort of concerns. Most of those businesses are very, very small, um, and they don't have any more than eight to probably about 14 seats. So they wouldn't really have any room to have any sort of um, entertainment in the future. Thank you. Uh, so they are, there are three of these, uh, of, so Zatunes, Shengdu, and Jay Renee have, are filing for, a li or submitted for a license. That is correct. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Barnes. Thank you. Um, so the ordinance has been 
working. Uh, so the ordinance has been in effect for, um, I guess, just under two years. And I was just wondering if, if, on behalf of the police department, we could hear kind of what experience you've had with uh, the ordinance, whether there have been any issues or complaints, um, and really what prompted the, the changes that we have here. Sure. Uh, Robert McHugh, Assistant Police Chief. Um, as you know, we've, we've had the ordinance for quite a while. The only time that we've actually used it was um, in connection with the Los Imperios restaurant. Uh, so these suggestions here tonight that we've uh, asked to get put in are a result of our learning experience through that process. Uh, one of the requests that we put in is that we shorten up and tighten up the uh, length of time between the hearing and the notice. Uh, we realized going through that process that we were in the uh, position where we were actually having hearings in um, uh, going forward, but yet we had to reinstate his license because of the time delay. So we're asking for that to be changed. Uh, we also, <clears throat> excuse me, wanted to uh, put a um, part of the ordinance, the ability to find the DJs. So if a DJ comes in and it's an unlicensed uh, establishment, we'll give them a, a warning, tell them they can't do that. Uh, the next time they show up, we'll issue them the, um, the um, uh, ticket. Uh, we also um, feel that in certain cases, uh, the chief of police should have the ability to suspend the license <clears throat> immediately if there's a public safety need, which is why we also added the uh, definition of a, a public safety concern into it. And then the final caveat I believe we asked is that they uh, post that their entertainment license is under suspension so that if patrons are coming, they won't bother going in. They'll know that there is no longer entertainment. So these are, these are suggestions from the lessons learned during the last one. Uh, to answer your other question, we have not used this at uh, any other establishment. Uh, we certainly have reminded people that they need to get a license. Uh, if we've gotten a noise complaint, maybe the DJ was too loud, we've reminded them of it, that immediately corrected the problem without us taking any other action. So it seems to be working very well. Very good, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Okay, so we have uh, and do we have anybody signed up to speak to this? Is there, I don't think we have anybody signed up on the sheet? Oh, we do, sorry. Apologize. <laughs> Water in my ear? No. Uh, so I would like to call Mel Melinda uh, Mantovani up first, and the next person is Mary Alice Sullivan to come and speak. So you have three minutes to speak uh, on this subject, this public hearing. I won't take that long. Um, I'm Melinda Montavani, and I really just came to say thank you to the mayor, to the police department. Um, when we um, got the hearing to stop the renewal of the liquor license, you all were instrumental in your testimonies, and we are so grateful that this ordinance has come forward because everybody's fear is going to happen again. And um, so really that's why I came, and I like the parking piece because there was an 85-year-old woman. She parked in front of her unit and then was told she needed to move because that was valet parking. So <laughs> I like the municipal lots. And um, our life in that neighborhood is so much better. So thank you. Thank you, Melinda. All right, next we have Mary Alice Sullivan. I would also like to say thank you to the mayor and particularly the police department. They were always very responsive whenever we called with a complaint or a concern. I live at 892 Farmington Avenue and I've been there for over 30 years. So I have experienced all the incarnations of the various establishments down the, the block from me. And very few of them have been good. There has always been a problem either with noise or with parking. And uh, the last one, as the police will testify to this, it was really dangerous. It reached the point where I would not be out at certain hours of the evening. I always made sure to get myself home before the uh, noise in the neighborhood really started. So we're very glad that this ordinance is going to be put in to practice. And again, thank you very much for all your concern and input into this problem. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary Alice. Uh, is there anybody else in the audience that would like to speak uh, to this pu public hearing? All right. 
And with that, I will close the public hearing. If there's, a, I'm sorry, Mr. Lang. Sorry, just before the hearing began, Bob McHugh pointed something out to me. Um, in the ordinance, there is a typo. The good news is it's in a part of the ordinance that's being repealed. So it's not substantive in any way, but if you look at uh, section 75-9, subsection C, which is on page 52 of your books, if you're looking in your books, um, it indicates that the fine is $1,250. It's not. It's $250. There's a stray one got added in there. So just wanted that to be clear for the record. Okay, so when we uh, move to adopt, uh, we would we have to refer to this in any way or no, no? you don't have to refer to it at all okay. I just wanted it all to be clear for everyone okay any other questions before I close the hearing all right with that I'll close the public hearing and if it's okay with everyone we can start the council meeting all right so we will we call I will call the August 14th council meeting we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call, Ms. Libro. Mr. Barnes. Present. Ms. Cantor. Here. Mr. Davidoff. Here. Mr. Dodge. Here. Ms. Fay. Here. Ms. Kerrigan. Here. Mr. Sweeney. Here. Mr. Winograd. Here. And Mr. Williams. Here. Uh, I'll first start by welcoming um, Ms. Uh, Helen, Helen Rubino Turco uh, to the table. She is filling in for our town manager. She's our acting town manager this uh, this week while uh, Mr. Hart is away. Um, and so thank you so much for being here. All right, number four, uh, Ms. Gergen. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move approval of the minutes, town council meeting 717 2018 and 719 2018, a public hearing establishing procedures for licensing and public. Safety Police Details at Entertainment Establishment 717-2018, and a public hearing editing schedule of permitted accessory uses, Section 27 for food trucks, 717-2018. Second. Motion's been made and said that's a mouthful. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, number five is our public forum section. I don't think there is anybody that has not spoken uh, relating to the public hearing, but uh, we will look at the sign up and make sure. Okay, so there is nobody else in the audience I, from what I can see. Um, so we will move on to number six, and I sent you, yes, okay. revised. Thank you. Uh, I move we place items 11 through 17 and 22 through 25 on the consent calendar. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Number seven is carrying. Uh, I move adoption of an ordinance establishing procedures for licensing and public safety police details at entertainment establishments. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Um, Mr. Winograd, do you want to do a brief uh, review of? Yes, Mayor, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, the public hearing um, uh, adequately and, and actually well more than adequately explain the reasons for um, this uh, ordinance uh, we all went through uh, not as much as the neighbors did but um, and I live fairly close by but we all went through the the problem of um, a certain establishment and among the problems obviously was the impact on people who parked away from the site and walked back to their cars um, often loudly often disruptively um, to the extent that we can put a stop to that, um, I think it's necessary. Um, and I do hope that this will go a long way toward um, really protecting the neighborhood. Um, I also want to say that um, very glad and you know that we did have the discussion and we took our time with this to make sure that other businesses weren't negatively impacted. Um, and the outreach that staff did was excellent. Um, I appreciate that. Um, and to the extent that we have a few businesses that now will try to get in under the, the deadline. Um, is helpful because um, we certainly do want to make this a town that has lots of entertainment I and mean, it's not an anti-entertainment ordinance at all but we do have to balance it with the uh, respect for our neighborhood so I think this ordinance does that and I urge uh, support thank you mr. gonna get when a grad that was very well said anybody else so I also want to thank, um, obviously, Todd Dumayer, town planner, who brought this to uh, community planning, um, and a uh, police department, uh, specifically uh, Assistant Chief McHugh, who worked very, very hard on, on making an ordinance that, again, 
secures vibrancy in the town, but does protect um, our our, city, our residents that are sit right on top in many in many areas of uh, residential districts. Um, Ms. Gorski, I also want to thank very much for her outreach. Um, the businesses feel very comfortable coming to her if they're uncomfortable. Uh, she makes herself very available. Uh, but the outreach specific to this is well appreciated, and now three uh, establishments are are going to be uh, making sure that they are, uh, meet the requirements uh, going forward. So uh, I want to also thank Melinda and Mary Alice for being here and for speaking. This was a, a painful, um, painful year uh, with, or actually it's a couple of years, um, with an uh, establishment that made it very difficult for residents to um, have a good quality of life. Uh, and it was a concern for our uh, officer safety and resident safety and people coming to uh, to the town. So hopefully this will, oh, this will help uh, with future, any future establishments. Um, and this is a working document. This is something that we can uh, change and, and adjust with time. So um, again, <coughs> thank you all for the time we put into this. Sometimes these things you think are going to happen so quickly, and it's been months. <laughs> so we appreciate that. All right, and with that, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, and oh, sorry, that's a roll call. That's right. Uh, we'll go for roll call. Uh, Mr. Barnes. Yes. Ms. Cantor? Yes. Mr. Davidoff? Yes. Mr. Dodge? Yes. Ms. Fay? Yes. Ms. Kerrigan? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Mr. Winograd? Yes. And Mr. Williams? Yes. It's unanimous. Thank you. I apologize. Uh, number eight, Ms. Thank, Kerrigan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move we set for public hearing on September 25, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the Legislative Chamber and refer to two TPZ, DRAC, and CROG. Um, an application by Downstream Properties LLC requesting modifications to the existing conditions of approval for Special Development District Number 46, located at 643 Prospect Avenue. The requested amendments seek to allow the existing third floor space to be used for office, to allow professional office use within the SDD, and for minor architectural amendments to the facade of the building. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Number nine, Ms. Kerrigan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move adoption of a resolution appropriating $446,000 in the fiscal year 2018-2019 budget of the capital and non-recurring expenditure fund for the funding of vehicles, capital equipment, and professional services. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Um, I think we have Mr. Privatera in the audience to talk about this. Thank you so much. Good evening, uh, Pete Privatero, Finance Director. This appropriation uh, is for town vehicles, firefighting equipment, refuse equipment, refuse barrels, uh, professional services, and uh, some other funds for the uh, police department. Um, when we were going through the budget process last year, we held back on a lot of requests from departments for, for capital and recurring needs. Um, when it was determined at the end of the fiscal year when we we're going to have a, a surplus at the end of the year, uh, departments, some departments came back to the town manager and asked for some reconsideration <laughs> of some of the equipment. Uh, the town manager agreed, and you have this uh, resolution in front of you. Uh, for the town vehicles, it's a replacement of five vehicles. Uh, it was submitted by the Public Works Department, but the vehicles are for plant facilities, community development, and for public works. Uh, the firefighting equipment, uh, six sets of turnout gear, and uh, a new life pack 15 cardi uh, cardiac monitor that's no longer being supported. The $75,000 for the professional services. Uh, last year, you approved an appropriation for the plan of development uh, study. Um, we went out to RFP, we had everything together, but we just, we executed a contract, but we just could not encumber the money in time. Um, so that lapsed, so this is basically re-encumbering that money. And uh, there was some uh, transfer to the capital projects fund. That was basically um, for the IT department. Uh, they requested some money to implement some public safety time and attendance system upgrades and also a new training and document manage management system for police and fire. So all in all, uh, $446,000 from CNRE. Thank you, Mr. Prefetter. I see that we have our... Um we have our fire chief here. We have our assistant fire chief, new, well, new um, assistant fire chief here. Um, and we have uh, Mr. Phillips here. So if anybody has any questions uh, for any of the, We did go over this in finance and budget. Uh, mm -hmm. So we discussed this appropriation. Anything? 
No? Thank you so much. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, when we have all those items on consent, and then number, next number 10. we have oh. number 10, that's right, we move that. Uh, resolution uh, number 10, Ms. Kerrigan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I move adoption of a resolution to carry forward unexpended grant funds from a Federal Emergency Management Agency assistance to firefighters program grant. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, I think we have the fire chief. Do you want, should this be, who would like to, Mr. Pervetier, you want to start? And <laughs> Thank you. I'll speak to it. I'm sure uh, if I miss something, Gary will jump right up here. Um, we received a grant for an ambulance. And uh, unfortunately, we we're trying to put everything together, uh, specifications. We didn't have time to go out to bid. And the grant lapsed. Uh, the chief uh, went to FEMA and asked for an extension of that grant. We received an extension of the grant. I believe we have to the end of the calendar year uh, to actually procure it. So this basically um, reapproves the grant and also reapproves the appropriation of our match of twenty thousand dollars from CNRE. Thank you, Mr. Prevotier. Mr. Barnes. Yeah, just one follow-up question: Do we have any idea when we're going to take delivery of the vehicle? Well, we haven't technically. We haven't ordered it yet, but I'll let, well, I'll let Gary speak to it. I'm Gary Allen, Fire Chief. Uh, we have the grant extension until the end of January of 2019. And if the vehicle's not in at that point in time, uh, we have an additional, we can apply for an additional six months so we can get an additional year uh, on this particular grant. Okay. Uh, and are you, do you anticipate needing an additional six months or do you think it's something we'll get done before the end of the year? It takes 200 days to build it once it's ordered. However, um, depending upon uh, the chassis availability, which we know the chassis is available, uh, it's building the box, so there's a good possibility it could be here by within that period of time. Very okay. Good. All right, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, okay. All right, with that, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. We have consent items, and then we have reports from our town manager. Ms. Habina Turco. Good evening. I have some quick reports for you. Um, the staff report is the West Hartford Police Department, and we still have uh, Chief McHugh is here, uh, welcome three new officers. Uh, they recently joined the West Hartford Police Force and are now at the Connecticut Public uh, Police Academy in Meriden for 22 weeks of training. Um, and we'd like you to please welcome Steve Dickman of Waterbury, Victoria Marco of New Britain, and Zachary Kiesman of Trumbull. Um, Park Road and I-84 construction update. I'm sure this is important to lots of commuters. The reconstruction of the Park Road I-84 interchange project is progressing well. The contractor has now reached a point that it will require a partial closure of Park Road. Beginning this week and remaining in place for several weeks, Park Road will be, will be limited to one lane in each direction between Raymond Road and the I-84 exit 43 off-ramp. Traveling, traffic traveling east on Park Road will still be able to access I-84 on-ramp to proceed east or west. The Park Road westbound traffic wishing to access I-84 will be detoured to the Main Street exit 41 ramps. Troutbrook Drive, Exit 42 is the recommended alternate access to I-84 East. A couple of maintenance shutdowns. Cornerstone Aquatic Center is shut down for renovations, cleaning, and improvements starting yesterday, August 13th, through Sunday, August 26th. Uh, Veterans Rink will also be shutting down for cleaning and repairs from August 27th through September 3rd, Labor Day, and will reopen on September 4th. Now the outdoor pools are closing on Sunday, August 19th. That is the pools at Eisenhower Park, Kennedy Park, and Beachland Park will close for the season. However, Fern Ridge Pool will remain open through Saturday, August 25th. So for that week, from Monday through Saturday, they will be open from noon until six daily. The splash pads will remain open through Labor Day and probably a little after. Um, in West Hartford Center, there is a new West Hartford business di directory available. 
It is through the collaborative efforts of staff um, from the Economic Development Library and Municipal Parking. This freestanding West Hartford Center business directory sign has really received a facelift, both in appearance and content. The sign, located on the corner of Farmington Avenue and LaSalle Road, was updated to accurately display 135 street level businesses categorized by dining, retail, and services. Businesses located west of South Main Street are listed alphabetically with an alphanumeric identifier corresponding to its location on the map. Parking Division staff painted the signage structure prior to installation on August 10th. Um, and also the, some holiday detail, uh, delays and closings due to Labor Day, the Labor Day holiday on Monday, September 3rd, the collection of trash, recycling, and bulky and metal waste during the week of September 3rd through September 7th will be one day late after the holiday. So Monday's collection will be done on Tuesday, Tuesday's collection will be done on Wednesday, etc., with each remaining day of the week being one day later. For more information, you can also check the website of Payne's Incorporated um, or call them at 860-844-3000. And of course, Town Hall, West Harvard Public Schools, the Community Center, Senior Centers, Library, Skating Rink, and the Public Works Yard Waste and Recycling Center all will be closed on the Labor Day National Holiday, September 3rd. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions for Helen? I would think probably not. Just thank you for being here You're and welcome. joining us. Because <laughs> that would be. Um, <laughs> uh, I have a few time, time sensitive announcements. Otherwise, the first thing is voting polls close in an hour and 12 minutes. If you hadn't had, had the opportunity to vote, uh, you still have time. And it's not raining. So go vote. Don't watch us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, 20th uh, Park Road Parade. It's early, but October 6th, so if you want to sign up, please do. Uh, voting is open for the 4th Annual Best of West Hartford Awards. Uh, vote for your favorite businesses. Go to we slash ha dot com backslash vote now 2018. I'm sure if you Google it, you'll find it. Uh, food pantry needs food. The West Hartford Food Pantry is almost out of pasta sauce, canned corn, and rice. We need your help. Donations may be left in the town hall lobby Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. If you are bringing in a large donation or have questions, please contact Nancy Stockman, Food Pantry Coordinator. This happens uh, during the uh, school year where many, uh, many families don't have uh, school program, school food programs, so um, families do go through quite a bit of food. So um, please, if possible, drop off. Auditions for West Hartford Haunting, September 4th and 6th. No Webster House invites the public to audition for the outdoor theatrical tour of the town's North Cemetery that entertains over 800 people during the last two weekends in October. Auditions will be 5 to 7 uh, at the No Webster House, 227 South Main Street. Ten-minute audition slot uh, can be reserved by visiting nowebsterhouse.org. Mama D's Gay 90s Romp is at the Playhouse on Park, running August 16th through 25. Uh, visit the Playhouse website uh, for tickets. Seamus Turco Blood Drive. For the fourth year in a row, a special blood drive will be held on Monday, August 20th from 8 to 6 p.m. at the Town Hall Auditorium in honor of Seamus Turco, a 20-year-old West Hartford resident and the um, really phenomenal son of, of Helen right here, and Connor High School graduate who recently completed treatment for a lymphoma blastic lymphoblastic lymphoma, a blood cancer. Seamus, along with his twin brother Gabriel and two fr twin friends, Abby and Kate Goslin, are hosting this blood drive to help ensure that blood is available for patients in need. Seamus is doing great and hosting this annual blood drive remains an important community service for him and his friends. Appointments in advance are encouraged. Visit the Red Cross, uh, www.redcrossblood.org Enter sponsor code TURCO, T-U-R-C-O, or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. And uh, we thank, and we're so grateful that he is doing wonderful. We also thank Connecticut Children's Medical Center for their remarkable work. Uh, 10th annual pool, pou bleh, pouch 
plunge. <laughs> it said say pooch plunge, but it says pouch plunge. <laughs> oh, a little tight by there. Uh, but yes, it's the pooch plunge, and hopefully not on a pouch. Uh, on Monday, August 20th, after the day the West Hartford Public Schools closed for the season, Beachland Park's pool will remain open for two sessions of dog-only swims. The first session is held 4 to 5.20, and the second session 5.30 till 7. The cost is $5 per dog per session. Payment can be made in cash at the gate or in advance through PayPal. Proceeds benefit the West Hartford Dog Park Coalition in its quest to find a suitable location for a dog park. Visit West Hartford Dog Park, all one word, no spaces, dot org, uh, for the make the payment online at PayPal. And excuse me, Mayor Cantor, if I could yeah. just remark that this is at Beachland Pool. Usually this has been held at Kennedy Pool. So I just wanted to make sure that people understood this was a new location. Thank you very much. Uh, the second annual movie night at Fern Park, Friends of Fern, is hosting uh, on August 22nd at Fern Ridge Park, 567 Fern Street. The feature film is Bad News Bears and Walter Matthau and Tatum O'Neill. Okay, we're historic films. <laughs> Plan to arrive <laughs> around 7.15, classic, I should say. So, uh, 7.15 uh, p.m. to select your spot on the grass on the south side of the pool fence or come earlier with a picnic. Friends of Fern will have entertainment and concession-style popcorn to pass the time before the movie starts around 8. The event is free thanks to the generosity of Jeff Brand, State Farm, Wendy Smith from Robin, um, Gabriel team at William Ravis and Nadia, Nadia, sorry, Kachawa from Cold, Coldwell Banker. In the event of rain, the movie night will be moved to Thursday, August 23rd, 8 p.m. Center streets. Folks of all ages are invited to take the streets for a carefree and car-free summer morning in West Harvard Center on Sunday, August 26th from 9 to 1. Uh, the town will close the traffic on four roads to form a rectangular loop around the central business district. Participating restaurants will offer brunch specials and free surprises. Many merchants will feature discount and live music will be performed all morning. Children will be able to ride their bikes, play hula hoop, jump rope, and draw the chalk in streets close to traffic. It's really a great morning. Eat, drink, give a recipe for ending hunger. Uh, that is on Monday, August 27th. There's actually been a lot uh, advertised on this. It's sponsored by Grant's Restaurant with many partners. Uh, and uh, it's at 6 p.m., six-course gourmet dinner with wine pairings. Tickets are $125, and 100% of the proceeds will be donated to Food Share. For tickets, visit billygrant.com backslash events. Inaugural Restaurant Week from August 28th to September 3rd. Restaurant patrons will enjoy a delicious delicious meal at value pricing while supporting food share at the same time. Participating restaurants will offer lunch and price fixed dinner menus, $12 for lunch and 20 or 30 or 40 price points uh, for dinner uh, showcasing their unique options. Diners also can participate in Instagram contests sharing their pictures and experiences with hashtag WH Restaurant Week for a chance to win a $100 gift card to the restaurant of their choice. Fourth annual Noah Webster Real Ale Harvest Fest for Charity. Uh, it will be held on September 8th on Saturday. All proceeds of this one-of-a-kind brew fest will benefit the educational mission of the Noah Webster House and West Hartford Historical Society. The premise of this fest is simple. Brewers are invited to create a cask of real ale just for the event. Last year, 25-plus breweries from around the region entered the competition. Tickets are $50 through September 6th and include unlimited samples and a souvenir tasting glass. Tickets purchased after September 6th are $60 at the door. Discounted tickets will be available for designated drivers at $20. EV Car Show, Electric Vehicle Car Show, will be held on Saturday, September 8th at Kingswood Oxford School to promote sustainable electric vehicles in the Hartford area. Admission is free. However, any donations made will benefit Integrated Refugee and Immigrant Services of New Haven, which will give refugees the opportunity to take part in interactive mentor-based STEM programs. This event is organized by the Wyvern Robotics Team of Kingswood Oxford School in collaboration with the West Hartford Clean Energy Commission. And that's all I had. Is there any, anybody have anything else? Okay, uh, so announcements are done. Reports from Corporation Council, Mr. Lair. Good evening. Um, I have one item to report, and that is that on the day after your last council meeting, uh, the Connecticut Supreme Court issued an opinion in an appeal uh, of a trial decision which we had won. Um, they affirmed the trial court. This is the tax appeal of Walgreens Eastern versus the town of West Hartford. Um, it's a case which at the time it was brought was one of about a dozen tax appeals brought by Walgreens. Um, lucky me, I was selected to try my case uh, as, the, uh, 
as the test case, if you will, um, addressing some of the issues that Walgreens was raising. I counted this morning and there are some 38 uh, outstanding tax appeals involving Walgreens around the state, essentially all put on hold while these issues were addressed. Um, we prevailed. Uh, the difference in value was about uh, $2 million at, at stake. Um, so it's the tax on $2 million in fair market value times five years during the reval period. Um, and you can translate that out to the other 38 cases and you, you quickly see that uh, there were a lot of eyes on that case. Uh, so I was very pleased to have that win. And in the tradition of the U.S. Supreme Court, I have a copy of the decision here. I thought I'd read it aloud. Um, and then I thought again. Uh, so um, I, I just wanted to take a brief victory lap there. Thank you very much for sharing and your leadership and hard work on this. I know there are many, many grateful municipalities throughout Connecticut that are uh, very um, supportive of all that you did and uh, will all um, benefit from your hard work. And, and, I, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank CCM because it's fairly rare. They have a fairly tight budget, but they actually filed an amicus brief that I think really helped remind or, or allow the court to realize that this wasn't just a one-off case, that this was a, a, an important case to all Connecticut municipalities, and they deserve kudos for that. Great. Thank you very much for that, Pat. Uh, any questions for Corporation Council? Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Well yeah, done. A little. Thank you. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> all right. Lucky to have you. <laughs> Uh, number 20, we have, oh, no, that was 21, we have one appointment, Michael Johnson appointed as regular member of TPZ Board of Appeals, a term ending 12-31-22. I move that we, we appoint Michael, and can you second? Second. Okay. Motions remain a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Um, let's see, now we're down to, no, yeah, consent calendar, yeah, 26. Okay. Okay. Motions remain and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, number two petitions, uh, no executive session. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Motions remain and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries.